Welcome to Behind the Backline, the podcast where we chat with merchants, brands, and industry professionals in the musical instrument, pro audio, and event technology space about their products, services, industry trends, stories, and more. Join us now as we dig into the stories behind our favorite backline gear. Welcome to episode 19 of Behind the Backline. I'm Matt Jacoby of Octave Media, and today I am speaking with someone right here in my backyard, a good friend of mine, Roy Elkins from Broad Jam. How are you doing today, Roy? Hey, Matt. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, so I kind of wanted to start with uh, just kind of letting you uh, tell our listeners a little bit about who you are. Well, uh, I, I'm the founder of Broad Jam. We, we founded it in 1999. Um, with the idea of providing a place for songwriters online. Uh, It's evolved. Obviously, if you have a a company for 19 years and you had two or three features a year, you have 30 or 40 features. (laughs) Probably probably the uh, uh, two most used features on our site is, number one, the social network, which we're very proud of. We believe it's the largest social network in the world for musicians. And two, we help musicians and specifically songwriters and composers get their music placed in film and TV every day. You could get about two uh, connections a day made. And pretty much what that's what we do. Uh, my background before that, I was with a keyboard company and Sonic Keyboards in the 80s and 90s. And then in the late 90s, I was with a software company, Sonic Foundry. Uh, and that's how I got to Madison, Wisconsin. So I've had a, a background in technology my whole career. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, how, you know, how did... Um how did it kind of evolve from, you know, your background in the music industry to like, hey, you know, we're missing this component in the, in the music scene. How did Broad Jam kind of evolve or become an inspiration to grow? Well, uh, when I left Sonic Foundry in the late 90s, um, in looking at the web, I mean, it was kind of like the Wild West. Um, and what, what there were probably, I think, in my original business plan, I found about 30 companies online that were focused on the independent musician. Uh, you know, that was mp3.com, Riffage, Ioma, uh, I'll see, maybe Loud Energy was around then. Um, and what I noticed is all of them were about the artist, and there were very few about the, uh, very, very few that were dedicated to the songwriter. In fact, there was very little data around the song itself. Most of the data was centered around the artist. And so we always knew that it was going to become a, a song-centric business. Uh, in fact, I remember we talked about that in the early 90s, uh, you know, how it was moving towards that um, when I was still at the keyboard company. And so the idea was to build a site where songwriters could come online, uh, they could upload their songs, index their songs, you know, wrap a whole bunch of fields of metadata around them. Um, so the search engine would find would uh, search engines would find their music easily. That wasn't the real uh, model as much as it was. It was a feature to help musicians get found and get connected, not only to fans and uh, but to people in the industry. Uh, to other musicians, and just a place, a community that um, musicians could exist together. It wasn't even called a social network then, or we weren't, the term wasn't even invented until, you know, a few years later when Facebook came around. So that was, that was kind of the inspiration is to really focus on the songwriter, the composer. That's cool. I never actually like distinguish that, uh, you know, just being the lowly drummer who doesn't actually in, have a, you know, need to use broad jam right now. But um, I, I guess I was just kind of associated it with like, oh, bands are on there. They're trying to get their music placement. I guess I never really thought of it being more tailored to the songwriter, but that that makes a lot more sense. I, I'm surprised I, I kind of missed that all these years. <laughs> well, I, I think that, I mean, I, I it's probably, you're probably not too far off, Matt. Uh, I, I think that the initial thought was songwriters, but over the years, obviously, we've added a lot of artist features, you know, with profile pages and, uh, you know, albums and, uh, you know, you can leave comments for other artists. Uh, you can review songs. Uh, you can transmit your songs around the web. There's a lot of features. So it really is a pretty well-rounded site today, and it has been for 10 years. Uh, initially, we were really focused on the songwriter, but as time grew and we added more features, it's probably a, you know, a very um, artist and songs uh, centric site now. Uh, but you know, our love is still songwriting and composition, and that's what uh, motivates us every day is to try to find great songs. Cool. And how, uh, like, 
once someone gets a placement, like, or I should ask who, um, who do you, who do you actually work with or who does Broad Jam like associate with, um, on the music industry side to, to get those placements? Well, there, there's, there probably isn't a show at this point that we haven't had a song in at one point or another. Um, and, and how it works is, you know, let's just say maybe a Hollywood director might come to us and say, you know, I'm looking for a heavy metal song for a scary episode in a movie or a TV show. And we post it on our site. And within hours, that director has, you know, 30, 40, 50 songs to choose from. And, and some of them really, really good. Some of them not so good. Some of them in between. And we use a lot of brokers to get there. And I, what I mean by brokers is uh, libraries, publishers, uh, sometimes song uh, pitching companies. Uh, since we're based in Madison, you know, we, we have to use uh, people who are there on the ground and, uh, and pitching music every day. Obviously, we have mechanisms, back-end mechanisms that track those pitches, see where they're going. Uh, some of the people don't use our mechanism to pitch, but uh, most do. So what, what we do is try to find key people in every marketplace and we'll kind of do our legwork for us. And, uh, and, and many of the people that we work with, too, are direct uh, supervisors at show. They work with ad agencies. So it's, it's kind of it's a general answer to uh, uh, an even more general question. You know, there's all kinds of people who license music every day in the industry, you know, films, film companies, TV shows, ad agencies, corporate uh, production companies. Uh, There's just all kinds of places to get your music um, uh, placed and featured. And we try to get to them any way we can is the, I guess, the answer to your question. (laughs) Okay. I, I'm, I'm actually getting a little bit of a learning uh, session right here now because, uh, you know, I've only really gotten a bare summary of what Broad Gem has ever been. And I mean, I've known you for 10, 12 years. Yes, <laughs> it's a little sad for a long time. Well, that's all right. That's all right. You know, yeah. I, I mean, we, we don't know all the details about all of our friends. In some, in some cases, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't. Other cases, well, maybe it isn't. I don't know. But uh, uh, yeah. So do you have do you have an idea of like the number of placements that you that Broad Gem has been a part of to date? We um, we don't know the exact placements, and and uh, we can tell you how many people have been selected. And the way it works is once we connect the seller of the song, the musician, and the buyer, the production uh, company, uh, it's up to them to negotiate the deal. Uh, so what we know, we've made about thirteen thousand uh, connections. Uh, most of them do get placed at some point. Uh, a lot of those connections are uh, musicians that just had got an opportunity to get a song in a library. And generally what happens once you get a song in a library who then will pitch your music for you, uh, if they like one of your songs, more than likely they're going to sign uh, more than one. They're going to sign multiple songs at some point. So uh, we, we say there's been 13,000 of those or over 13,000 now. In fact, let me look it up. It's right on the site. Um, I can tell you, I'll give you a specific number. We update that in real time as we get them. Uh, let's see, 13,734 as of this morning. Cool. That is an incredibly impressive number. <laughs> well, you know, it's, um, uh, you know, we'd like more uh, and we'd like to be better at knowing specifically once we make those connections, uh, what happens after that? Every once in a while, I'll get a letter from somebody and they'll say, you know, I, yeah, I was on your site. I made this connection with somebody. Uh, now they've uh, licensed and placed uh, 20 of my tunes. I just want to thank you. And they don't really need Broad Jam after that. And, and we're actually okay with that. I mean, you know, that's why we're here. We want to help you know, guys like me and you who have day jobs and are doing something else for a living and don't really have the time to go pitch their own music. And so they come to us and uh, we do that. Um, but the, the other thing too, Matt, that I, I always stress to people is that 95% of our members never use our music licensing. Uh, they're here for the social network. And, and it's, it's quite overlooked. I think Broad Jam is known for the music licensing uh, because that's the uh, sexy part of the business. Mm-hmm. But um, the, the, the number of people who connect to other musicians around the world um, and, and, and end up writing together and learning from each other and reviewing each other's music is well in the hundreds of thousands at this point. And it, it, who knows what that number is? It's, it's probably a half a million, is my guess. Um, 
And what I mean by that is, you know, uh, somebody from Maine might meet somebody from, uh, you know, Japan and they, they're very similar and they write a song or they write an album together and they might not ever meet. And that's one of the things we're most proud of is that we're able to help musicians connect. Uh, we've had people uh, send us notes and say, hey, I connected with a guy in the Netherlands. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm just paraphrasing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it, but things like this happen. I connected with somebody in the Netherlands and I'm now doing a tour uh, because that person happened to be in a band and they needed a guitar player and I sent them a track and uh, I'm doing this and all kinds of things like that. And that is very rewarding um, for us. It, it's uh, so I, I always encourage everybody, no matter what happens with your licensing and how you get connected to the industry, make sure you connect to other musicians. Uh, simply because you never know who's going to have the next opportunity and, and you might be part of that. You know, you, you look at Facebook to connect with people that you grew up with, you went to high school, you've met along the path. LinkedIn is kind of for business connections and people uh, that you met along your business path. Broad Jam is for people you don't, you connect with people you really don't know. Oh, there's probably a handful of musicians on here you know, but you can connect with musicians all over the world um, and who are similar to you. And what I find is the ones who are most successful uh, as they grow as a musician, and, and if you can use Broad Jam as a barometer, it's the ones who are networking or connecting or following up on questions and, and are listening to other music. And I think that's the one thing that um, I would always encourage everybody is just get connected and network and keep dialogue open with everybody you're communicating or everybody that you're connected with. I would agree that the music industry is the one, probably the biggest industry where it's all about who you know. And it's, it's awesome to see that Broad Jam can be such an int integral launch pad for some of those connections and some of those relationships to grow and, and blossom into something like you said, you know, if someone takes off and then you get to go along with, with them for the ride. So, well, it, it, that's, a, that's a good point. You know, you, it's expected in today's world that the productions have to be at a certain level uh, because if, if you have basic computer skills, you can come up with a pretty decent production. Now you're not going to have a world-class production, um, but you can, you know, with, with some of the tools out there, you can come up with pretty good, um, you know, productions. So if everybody's doing that and it's expected, it's about getting connected and just finding the right people that gel. And, you know, when you read about all these bands that make it and, you know, you, you know, maybe somebody like Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters, uh, how many bands was he in prior to Nirvana? And, and all of these, all of the bands you read about that are successful, every member of that band was in five or six bands. And because they kept connecting, kept networking with other people, they finally found that right combination that, that uh, catapulted them to the top. And that's why it's important, because you just don't know. And, you know, it's, it's a good... Uh, uh, it's a good habit to get into, uh, you know, to, to, to meet the right people and uh, attend conferences and get online and listen to people like, you know, conversations like this. It's a good habit just to keep educating yourself uh, and keep um, learning from other musicians as well as people in the industry. Yeah, I've, I feel like this is my first um, Between the Waves um, experience I missed last year. But, you know, being able to go and helping with the, the, the one of the rooms, being able to, you know, get some FaceTime and some, some talk time with, you know, like Emily White and um, Billy Holland, who I stayed in contact with afterwards. You know, he recognized me at the Music Awards the next night just to, you know, have some of those people under the belt and say, hey, you know, I, I had an opportunity in, in Madison, um, you know, I'm going to hang on to this because who knows when I'm going to need it next. Well, and who knows when they're going to need you. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> you never know. They're going to, they might need you down the road for something. And they're, this is why these folks are successful is because everybody they meet, they follow up with, or they talk to afterwards, you know, and you mentioned too. And by the way, for those who are listening, uh, 
Between the Waves is a conference that we put on. This is our second year. Uh, last year, our featured speakers were the Avett brothers. This year, it was Butch Vig and Michael Boddicker. We've had Kip Winger, uh, David Spiro, D-Tech from Acon's record company, DJ Payne. We've had a lot of, a lot of celebs come through and a lot of experts in the business. And the two you spoke of, uh, Emily White and Billy Holland, two of the great managers in the industry, Billy in the uh, countryside and Emily White from New York uh, and, you know, pop rock. And they're both just extremely accessible and always looking for new things. So, you know, if, if you're in the Midwest, Between the Waves is a great place to go and connect with folks like this. But whether you're here or whatever city you're in, somebody's having a conference at some point uh, nearby. And I would encourage you, just like you just said, go make those connections. Because while you may need them, they may need you at some point. And we underestimate ourselves as musicians a lot of times that, well, maybe I'm just not good enough. That, that, that isn't the case most of the time. You know, there are a lot of people that make it that we listen to and we say, well, you know, they're, they're not very good. But uh, in, I don't say that to be critical as much as I say, eh, they're, they're pretty good. They have to have a certain level of talent to make it. Nobody makes it. That's just terrible. But, you know, they're pretty good. And but they're really good at following up and they're good. They're easy to work with and they're easy to get along with and they work hard and they're timely. And a lot of people in the industry and a lot of other musicians would prefer that over somebody who is just extremely talented, but can't get along with anybody. And, and I think when you come to these conferences, you hear that over and over and over again uh, from the experts in the industry. Just make yourself accessible, be on time, work hard, get along, be honest. And I mean, that's one theme I heard, you know, this year in the conference is just simply, uh, you know, work hard at what you do and keep perfecting your, uh, your skill set. So, and if you do that, uh, you make yourself more valuable to the industry. And eventually, you know, somebody, they won't pass on you. That's a long answer to a short question, man. No, that's perfectly fine. I'm, this is good. I didn't, you know, I was like, okay, well, you know, Broad Jam does the licensing, but like you said, you know, if 95% of your members are more focused on the networking aspect and, you know, it's an extension of the conferences and um, just basically, you know, like a music version of LinkedIn for the sake of building your network yeah. to yeah. grow your career, then that's, that's a great, you know, uh, twist of events for for this conversation. <laughs> well, I mean, if you if you look on our site, I'm just going to pull it up as I'm talking to you here. Um, we have this thing called the Musicians Marketplace on our site, and you know the the first one that comes up is somebody who will help you with your lyrics and melodies for your instrumentals. Uh, the next one, uh, let's see, let me scroll down a little. Music production in Asia. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, songwriter for hire. Um, composer of all types of music, uh, hip hop instrumentals for your media podcast TV show. Um, you know, we, we, a lot, our members, you know, have a marketplace. Not only can they pitch to you know, film and TV, they can post their own uh, skills. So someone else can come in and, you know, maybe you're looking for a guitar player to play on the next track. You can come in and audition guitar players and contract somebody right through right through broad jam. And, uh, I mean, God knows how many is on. I mean, I'm just looking at this. This list goes on and there's got <laughs> uh, people that are uh, mixing services for your song, full-time professional engineer. Uh, so it, it's not only about just getting your, um, you know, getting your music and film and TV sites like us and some of our competitors have other features, but we get so as musicians, we get so focused and, and which is good. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but sometimes you, you know, you, you miss the forest because you're standing in front of a tree, mm -hmm. you're at a tree. And I think, you know, just, you know, broaden your scope a little and see there might, you know, maybe you have a knack for just laying tracks down. Maybe you're a great guitar player. Uh, maybe you're not a great composer, but you're a great player and you know how to write parts real well. Uh, maybe you're not great at getting the lyrics and the song and the arrangement done, but man, you can, you can uh, crank out licks. Well, you can make money doing that. Um, and, you know, as I talk about in one of my lectures, you know, there's a few things, you know, if you can play by ear, if you can read music, read tab and understand the national numbering system, if you know, if you can do those four things, you will work the rest of your life. 
because there are very few musicians who do all four of those things well. Um, and then you go on and you think, well, you know, can you sing harmony? Can you play a second instrument? Can you sing lead? Can you rap? Can you do additional things on top of that? That adds value to yourself as a musician. And we provide a marketplace on Broad Jam to allow you to, uh, you know, to sell yourself to other musicians and other producers. That's awesome. Yeah. And, that, and not just another reason to, to network or yeah, another, yeah, another reason to use your site to network anyway. So like how many, um, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of just so people listening, like kind of understand what's the opportunity to network on your site? How big is your member base? Uh, I think we're at, uh, let's see, I haven't looked at it in a couple of weeks, but we're, we're getting close to 190,000. Okay. Uh, from 190 countries too. I, I don't think, we, I think there's 196 countries and there's five or six that we don't have yet. But uh, I suspect at this point, after 19 years, we're probably not going to get those countries. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're international uh, enough at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, don't, I couldn't even tell you the countries uh, uh, that we don't have uh, people from at this point. But, you know, we have, uh, you know, a contingent, uh, quite a few people from Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria, which I, I just love the fact that, you know, we have people from Nigeria and we have a handful of members from uh, Iraq and Iran, and we have a bunch from China. And these are typically uh, countries that, you know, it's really hard to, uh, for political or connection reasons, you know, to, to, to be online a lot. And I'm very proud that we have members from all over the world, from every, every background you can imagine. Uh, and, you know, and honestly, when I started this, it was out of uh, the love of songwriting and the love of technology. And that was kind of the idea. And there, you know, you don't think about, you know, having 190,000 members from <laughs> 190 countries. You just don't do that. Uh, when you start, you do it, you, you, you start companies because you, you want to provide a service, but you really love what you do. And that's, that's why we. That's awesome. Now, and you know, there's obviously a, a wide range of people you could connect with internationally but if i remember you still also have a scenes section on the site to kind of help people find each other locally yeah this is something we're exploring and it, it, right at the top of our site there's a there's a button called local scenes or local scene and you can click on that and you'll see uh, most of the countries in the world and we only i think we have a number like we have to have like 500 people from a country or something to create a scene and then you can drill down and i'm drill, drilling down on the united states right now as we're talking and then you can drill down further i'm going to pick wisconsin because that's where we're from uh and then i'm going to drill down to madison wisconsin and then basically you can see all the musicians from madison wisconsin that are on our website and uh, so if you want to connect in your local scene, uh, let's see, how many is that? What are you from Madison? Oh, my God. There's probably, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think there's oh, 63 times 20. There's about 1,500 from Madison, as my guess, just looking at the uh, number of pages. Um, and this is just one scene. So if we have a certain number of people from a marketplace, we create what we call a scene on Broad Jam. So you can post your gigs, you can communicate with each other, you can listen to music from that scene, and and so on. And it's um, it's kind of a fun thing to play around with, and it, we're exploring that we might take that a little further. Cool. Yeah, I think it's just as beneficial to find people you might already know or you haven't met this person, but they live like you know in Middleton from where I am, you know, just to, just across the the, the the ponds as we might say from here. <laughs> but yeah, they could be just as beneficial as you know connecting with somebody in California or somebody in Nigeria just to complete that song. So well, I, like I'm looking through this right now, and as you know, we're both pretty connected in the scene. On the first page, I'm seeing a couple people that. I've heard of, but I don't know, <laughs> you know, uh, and I, I'm a little curious as to <laughs> who they are, what their music sounds like. I'm just surprised that I don't know them. Um, second page, there's a few more. So, you know, you, we think we know all the players in the scene sometime, but we really don't. Uh, we, you know, there's, there's always this musician that's not performing live. Um, and they're just, and then you listen to their music. And so my God, this is an incredible songwriter. This is it's fantastic. Um, and I, you know, we find that every day from somewhere, uh, we find somebody that is just fantastic. Um, and and then there's some that aren't, but uh, you know, they're here, they're trying, and they're doing the best they can. So, uh, but that's what scenes are about. 
Cool. Yeah. If there's one thing I learned from my 14 years in Madison's music scene is that um, it's almost like kind of a generational thing. Like you try to keep up with it, but every day you swear there's at least 10 new bands that pop up. You can't keep up with all of them. You might've heard their name out at least once, but you will never know everybody, even though, you know, the people that kind of shift generation, generate, rationally, excuse me, you know, we kind of know everybody. There's kind of like this small group that does things together, but then there's always new people that come on later or people that fall off. So it's always changing and shifting. And um, that, especially if I've like sat out, you know, for like maybe three to six months because I'm busy with something else, I stopped going to shows for a bit. All of a sudden I'm like two years behind on bands. It's just crazy how fast they, they turn over. <laughs> Well, I mean, when you think, you know, it, I, I mean, I think the uh, um, the hip hop community is a great example of that mm-hmm. you have, you know, our, the legendary hip hoppers in town here, like Rob D's and Dexter Patterson and uh, uh, Brad Thomas and some of these guys that are just fantastic performers. DJ Payne one uh, mm-hmm. who is very well known around the world. Uh, and then you look at the uh, this young guy uh, like Lucian Parker who I think is uh, just one of the best coming on. And then somebody in between those, Chris LaBella, who is just a fantastic performer. Um, and then you look at the blues scene, you know, you have West Sinai, Andy, one of the best harmonica players on the planet. And then the Jimmies, uh, very veteran blues bands. But then you see Rain Stern, who's 18 year old, who just tears it up. And uh, 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 Chavi Lynn, and who is just a phenomenal guitar player and he's 18 as well and just incredible performers at a young age so i think it's just a natural progression but a lot of those veterans influence the younger kids and and they just keep getting better and better you know the musicians today are better than they've ever been uh in in every genre across the board because they have people to learn from um and I think you, you probably in every market you see that you certainly see it in the national uh, uh, rankings. But um, you know, it's really you know it just seems that we're getting better and better music all the time. Um, so I, I think you're right. It just it changes a lot, and the scenes evolve and they grow. And trying to stay on top of it is hard. But uh, you know what? It, it's uh, I, I like doing it. I like I like listening to the, all the new stuff coming up. If you, if you've been doing it for so long, if you didn't like it, I think you would have stopped a long time ago. <laughs> well, there are times, Matt. <laughs> there are times I say, "What the hell am I thinking about?" You know, I, I can take some corporate gig somewhere and probably make uh, five times what I'm making now. But uh, uh, you know, and uh, but, uh, you know, I don't get to listen to music all day in that gig, and I don't, you know, I don't get to talk to bands. I don't get to do stuff like this. So you know, that's. Uh, I, I, I love what I do. You know, I've been working with independent musicians my entire career since the early eighties. And um, I, I hope to continue that until I retire. Awesome. And the two things we learned today is network a lot and love what you do. Cause that's what Roy does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, before we uh, wrap up, I wanted to quickly let you uh, plug uh, the website so people can kind of find out more about the, the service. Well, there's two things, broadjam.com. Um, and, uh, you know, and explore, just get in there and, and look around. And once you get inside broadjam.com, um, you'll see there's a list on the left-hand side and you'll see everything from our six pack songwriting competition to the musician's market, music licensing. We sell software pros who review on our site and so on. And then, uh, make sure you go to btwmadison.com as well. That's our conference that we run every year. And I think you'll, see what we did in 2017 and 2018 and it's going to even be better in 2019 so that you know uh regarding what we do those are the two places to explore and you can always send me an email roy at broadjam.com i respond to every email that comes in uh i try to do it within 24 hours and if i don't just give me give me a break and give me a couple days because sometimes (laughs) i don't like after the conference this year, I had over 700 main box. So I had to, it took, I'm just still getting unburied from that, but uh, it's okay. It's I'm glad people are interested in what we do. And like you said, you have an average of a hundred emails a day. So uh, just about 100 a day, yeah. every, everyone will have to just cool their jets and hang on until we're good. <laughs> <to us. laughs> I try to, I try to get to all of them within a day or two, you know, and, um, and sometimes I can't, but uh, you know, I think if somebody um, has the, um, I, I'm honored that somebody would send me an email and that I'm still able, able to, after all these years to, uh, to be in, involved in part of 
uh, a musician's life somewhere and, and they're part of mine. And so of course I'm going to respond. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's just, just practice what you preach in terms of the being available and accessible and positive exactly attitude. Right. And yeah, exactly. Other, otherwise it's hollow words. If you don't, yep. you, know, uh, you get, you gotta, you gotta live what you talk about. Yep. Well, thank you for joining me today. This has been great. All right. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for what you do. Yep. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Thank you for listening to Behind the Backline, brought to you by Octave Media, an inbound marketing agency focused on helping music merchants develop an automated solution to increase website sales. You can find Octave Media at www.octave.media. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast in iTunes or Google Play Music to learn more about great products and companies in the musical instrument, pro audio, and event technology space. And be sure to leave a review to let us know what you thought of this episode. We encourage you to share us with your friends and colleagues via social media, and we'll see you next time. Take care.